2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 12 says, Seeing then that we have such hope. Well, I'm glad we got hope tonight. I'm glad I'm not down at the pet mart looking for a dog collar for my kids. I'm glad I got hope. Huh? You know, this is all just lining up to let us know Jesus is coming. Huh? He says, We use great plainness of speech. The Apostle Paul here is not going to use any very big, difficult words. He's bringing it down where you can understand it. Look what he says. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. I say hallelujah. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I enjoyed every song. Oh, what a Savior. Seek ye first. And Lord, I'm glad what we're trading for a mansion. And Lord, we've got a lot to praise the Lord for. And God, we're thankful for the good song service. And God, we thank you for Brother Rocky's song. You're the best thing that ever happened to us. And God, we thank you for all the good testimonies. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. Now, Lord, help me real quickly to convey this thought that your people can carry it throughout the week, and God, it'll help them in the days to come. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We find here the great apostle is talking about the veil, uh, the veil in the Old Testament, the veil that Jesus done away with. But let me give you a couple things about this veil. There was the veil of deception. In verses 13 and 14, he harkens back to where Moses uh, used the veil, uh, and this veil blinded the minds of the Israelites. Uh, we had time in Exodus chapter 34 when Moses came down from the mount when he met with God and God gave him the original tables, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, Moses had been so close to God for 40 days uh, and 40 nights uh, that his face uh, shined like the sun uh, and it scared the Israelites. Uh, so they put a veil over his face. Uh, but as time went on and as Moses was not in the presence of the Lord, uh, 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 the glory or the uh, shining of his face began to wear away. Uh, and then they put the veil over his face uh, so the people wouldn't see that the glory had shined uh, 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 that had once shined was now gone uh, and now uh, they were deceiving the people to think the glory was still there uh, listen that's why we need revival uh, we have revival we get close to God uh, we start shining a little different uh, start sounding a little different uh, start looking a little different uh, but the farther we get away from the revival uh, uh, the less that we do those things but there was the veil of deception they were deceiving the people to think Moses still had that glow uh, can I say then we find in verse 15 the veil of darkness look what it says uh, it says but even unto this day when Moses is read he's talking about the Pentateuch uh, uh, the first five books of the Bible Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy he said when that is read uh, the veil is upon their heart they were religious they were here in the scriptures, uh, but there was a veil over their heart. It was a veil of darkness. Uh, even though they were here in the truth, uh, even though they were very religious, uh, they had no life to them. It was a veil of darkness, a veil of deception. But then he also talks about the veil of deliverance. Hallelujah, we ought to shout her out right there. Uh, look what it says in verse 16. Uh, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord. What? The dark heart. Uh, 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 the veil shall be taken away. Hallelujah. Uh, when Jesus said it was finished on the cross, uh, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the old covenant was then done away with. Uh, God took the true vine Israel and he grafted in a branch called the church uh, and made a way 
way uh, where we can be saved by grace through faith uh, made a way where every old Gentile dog uh, uh, who was lost in sin and had no hope uh, hey we can be delivered from our sins uh, hey we can be washed in the blood of Jesus uh, and made new creatures in Christ Jesus uh, can I say, uh, when the veil of deliverance comes, we find in verse 17 there's liberty. Uh, in verse 18 we find there's light. Uh, and close out verse number 18 we find there's lifting. Uh, we're changed from glory to glory day by day. Uh, we're lifted a little more uh, uh, from the uh, uh, degeneracy that God found us in. Uh, he's constantly working on us. Uh, uh, he's constantly changing us and conforming us to His image. Uh, and what a blessing. Uh, now listen, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Can I say in being saved, there's liber liberty to reverence or worship the Lord. We didn't have to come in tonight and be instructed or have a cheerleader to tell us how to worship. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty to reverence. Can I say there's liberty to rejoice? What a blessing. This world has no hope. There's pleasure and sin for a season. They understand pleasure, but they do not understand rejoicing. You've got to have the joy of the Lord to know that. Uh, and can I say in liberty, there is liberty to respond. Tonight, we gave everyone ample opportunity to follow the Lord in their heart in the service. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And so, let me just give you a start. I'm throwing them out. You write them down. I throw them out. I got four and a half minutes left. That's including my prayer time and my Bible reading time. I want to give you this little thought. Where is the Spirit of the Lord? Verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, capitalized, and where the Spirit, capitalized, of the Lord is, there's liberty. Well, where's the Spirit of the Lord? Can I say the Spirit of the Lord can be found in the sanctuary? Hallelujah. We've had some of that tonight. I was thinking sitting over there, isn't it wonderful? We didn't have to have an orchestra behind the singing to stir our emotions. The words of the song stirred our emotions. Uh, uh, the Lord was here, uh, and where the Lord is, there's liberty. You can find liberty in the sanctuary. Uh, hey, uh, uh, folks say, well, I can worship God down at the lake. Not like you can in the sanctuary, because uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord's in the sanctuary. Uh, again, Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, where can you find the Spirit of the Lord? In the sanctuary. Uh, where can you find the Spirit of the Lord? In the Scriptures. Hallelujah. Uh, he's the one that wrote the Scriptures. Uh, uh, you can find Him in the Scriptures. Uh, Brother Phil came into church tonight talking about he's reading the Bible today and he got them goosebumps all over him just reading the Bible. Uh, how'd that happen? Because the Spirit of the Lord's in the Scriptures. Uh, you can find it. You can read a passage a hundred times uh, and the hundred and first time you'll see something you never saw before. Uh, why this book is alive because uh, he's alive uh, you'll find the spirit of the Lord in the scriptures you'll find it in the sanctuary where's the spirit of the Lord you'll find it in the saints uh, aren't you glad he sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, hey I'm glad I know him uh, how do you know he know him because he lives within me uh, I'm glad uh, you find him in the saints uh, and I'm glad his spirit bears witness with our spirit we are the sons of God uh, and I'm glad he's given us a kindred spirit. Uh, there's just something about being around a child of God. Uh, the Spirit of God living in them, living in you. Uh, and even though you might just have met, uh, it's like you've known them all your life. Why? Uh, because you'll find the Spirit of the Lord in the saints. Uh, I thought about this. You'll find the Spirit of the Lord in service. Have you ever just started talking to somebody you never knew about the Lord and all of a sudden you started quoting verses uh, and things came up to your mind you didn't even know was in you? Uh, Where'd that come from? The Spirit of the Lord. When you serve Him, He'll give you the boldness and He'll equip you to accomplish your service for Him. Uh, you'll find the Spirit of the Lord in service. Uh, I promise you this, if you never do nothing for God, you won't find Him. He won't use you till you make yourself usable. He's not looking for your abilities. He's looking for your availability. And when you step out on faith to serve Him, you'll find the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, where do you find the Spirit of the Lord? You'll find Him in the storms. Brother Ron and I was talking about it before. Service. A lot of people don't like hard times, but in the hard times, that's where you're formed. That's where your faith grows. 
Hey, you grow in the valley, not on the mountaintop. And in the storms, you'll find the darker it gets, the brighter he gets. You'll find a peace that passes all understanding in the midst of your storms, friend. Oh, you'll find him in the storms. I thought about this. You'll find the Spirit of the Lord in snares. Hmm? Can I say he's in front of a snare to warn you? Don't go that direction. But if you ignore him, which we're all apt to do at time to time, and you fall prey and you fall in the snare, you'll find him in the snare to convict you and then to recover you out of the snare. Huh? Where you find the Spirit? I'm glad he's with us. Huh? I'm glad he convicts me. I'm glad he lets me know when I'm not right. I'm glad he warns me and lets me know I don't need to go that direction. Uh, you'll find him in the snares. Let me say this lastly. Where's the Spirit of the Lord? Well, he's simultaneously everywhere all the time. Uh, you can't go anywhere without bumping into him. You'll find him. Because he is omnipresent. Uh so there is no excuse for us not to worship, to serve, to rejoice, to enjoy being saved, to enjoy your salvation, to enjoy the goodness of God, because all you got to do is start thinking on Him and you'll find Him. Seek ye the Lord and His righteousness and you'll find Him, friend. Ah, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Some people act like they're in bondage being saved. I'm glad when I got saved, He set me free. And I'm glad I have liberty in Christ. My Christian walk is, I'm having the time of my life, friend. I enjoy being saved. I listen to preachers and they talk about, boy, it's tough. I just ain't, I'm having the time of my life. It's not tough being able to stand and proclaim God's Word. That's a blessing. Uh, I ought to be somewhere uh, digging a ditch somewhere, you know, and no, I get to preach my, do my passion, preach the Word of God, huh? It is not a drudgery, huh? It's not a drudgery living for God. It's not a drudgery coming to church. It's not a drudgery being around God's people. It's a joy because I find that's where the Spirit of the Lord is. Maybe they are in bondage and they need to be set free because I promise you, you ever run into Him, it change your life. If you don't believe it, you didn't listen to Brother Ron's testimony. He was an 18-year-old drunk having the time of his life. But he ran into the Word of God, where the Spirit of God was. He used to hate church, but he found himself kept going to church where the Spirit of God was. Uh, you used to hate the things of God. You used to, it's like that song we do every now in the choir, I'm one of them. I uh, 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 used to hate them until we became one. Are you listening? Uh, now he's one of them. Hallelujah. Huh? What happened? He ran into the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God changed his life. And isn't that a blessing? And didn't he do the same for you? Where is the Spirit of God? He's wherever you want to look and find him. The problem is too many times we're running from him instead of running to him. God help us to enjoy the liberty that is ours in Christ. We've been delivered. We ought to start living like it. Thank God for... The liberty we celebrate as Americans tomorrow, but we can celebrate the liberty of Christ every day of our lives because we're no longer in the bondage of sin anymore. All right. Miss Renee, come to the piano. Brother Ray, come get a song. Let's all stand. Maybe you need to come thank God you've been set free. Maybe you need to go to one of these kids and tell them you're proud of them. Maybe God spoke to your heart about something else. You just do what God told you to do because you got the liberty to do it. You're in the house of God. But as they're getting a song ready, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you again for all the sweet testimonies. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the liberty we have in Christ. Lord, I'm glad I'm not under a veil of darkness anymore. Lord, the only veil there is is this veil of flesh that's keeping us from being in the presence of God. And one of these days we're going to lay it aside and look what we traded for a mansion. And Father, I pray now you'd help us to always walk and live in the liberty that you have provided for us. Bless now this invitation. Help your folks. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.